Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, we're going to talk about WWE's furious reaction to Jimmy Uso's latest arrest. I'm going to bring you an update on the health status of Terry Funk. I'll talk about the NXT star that WWE now has big plans for in 2021. And a major title change at the Great American Bash. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the news. All right, we're going to start things off by talking about Jimmy Uso. Uh, He was arrested on Monday. Uh, TMZ broke the story. We covered it a little bit on the website yesterday. But there's been some developments since then that we want to talk about in the video today. So the arrest went down. It was roughly 10.35 p.m. in Monday. Pensacola, Florida, DUI uh, was the reason he was arrested. Uh, A couple of police officers, uh, they tested him at roadside. His uh, blood alcohol content levels came out at zero, uh, sorry, 0.202 0.202 and 0.205 those numbers might not mean anything you know w- without context but to give that context the Floridian limit is 0.08 so he's well above the limit there unfortunately he was in jail he was taken in uh, a $500 bond was posted he's now out uh, but the situation is what it is this is of course his second arrest for DUI since 2019 uh, when there was an incident that July. Uh, He was ultimately found not guilty of that one, but there was also another arrest for Jimmy Uso in February 2019 related to an alcohol-fueled confrontation with police officers. Now, WrestleFloats have come through with a report on the matter. Uh, And WWE's response to it is not good. Uh, High-ranking officials in the company are said to be, in WrestleVotes' words, legitimately pissed off uh, with Uso following his latest arrest. Uh, They've consulted with two different sources on the matter, and uh, people are angry at this situation. Uh, And it can't be put down. The belief within the company, seemingly, is that it can't be put down to a mistake or bad luck. It's, you know, the third alcohol-related arrest for the guy. Uh, it's a personal choice and everything else. Dave Meltzer has a small update as well. He tweeted the following, uh, saying that WWE, there had been no internal fallout of this in WWE yet. The company, at the time of reporting, uh, had not made a decision, but they would, do, they would do soon, and they still haven't released a statement on the matter either. So... Yeah, man, tough, tough situation. Uh, Jimmy Uso needs help. Uh, yeah. That's the clearest thing to me. This is extremely dangerous. Uh, the, the guy is clearly uh, suffering from something. Won't speculate on any of that. But, like, man, uh, three times in, like, as many years is, is uh, really, really... It's a repeat habit, isn't it? Mm. And uh, I feel bad for the guy uh, to a degree. Um, it was a stupid decision, obviously, to get yeah. back behind the wi- the ring, but get back behind the wheel uh, under the influence. And I hope that uh, everything shakes out from this okay and that the guy can get whatever help he needs to, to overcome uh, whatever is plaguing him. Yeah, exactly. Just such disappointing news to read about yesterday, this Andy. Um, like you say, next in a series of these seeming events, you were telling me before that generally with this, WWE sort of yeah. says it's the person's problem. But like you say, with these repeat offences and how prominently he's featured, it's that's another, you know, it's completely separate. As you say, Andy, the most important thing is you should not drink and then get behind the wheel of a car. But it's so disappointing to have someone, you know, in trouble with the law when he's been used so prominently yeah. within WWE and clearly was being eyeballed as, as a major part of this Roman Reigns, you know, bloodline storyline going forward. Will that change plans now? That's not for us to say. Uh, but most importantly, like you say, Andy, I think I think Jimmy needs all the help he can get. And uh, yeah, let's hope he, he never does anything like this again because it's just, it's just a stupid, stupid decision. Um, but we will keep you posted on any developments as and when they come. Uh, unfortunately, we have to continue with some more sad news today, this time uh, talking about Terry Funk. It was claimed by Don Morocco yesterday. It was confirmed by Mike Johnson of PD Insider. The legend that is Terry Funk uh, has been moved into an assisted living facility. He is living with dementia. There was a post uh, on Funk's official Twitter account being managed by a third party now, of course, uh, saying the 77-year-old's condition uh, is, is the fact that he's going through residential care for issues affecting his mind and body the 
potential hope here comes from an update that came from one Tommy Dreamer, a fellow ECW legend, who uh, tweeted, everyone needs to relax. I just got off the phone with Terry Funk. He is not in bad health. He loves everyone talking about him. Di direct quote from Funker. I'm currently sitting in an assisted living place with my thumb up my ass, whistling Dixie, but I don't remember the words. Um, you know, <laughs> always nice to, to see people... Uh, you know, remembering the, the great things that, uh, that people have said and done. But, yeah, awful news to find out about yeah. yesterday, this Andy. Yeah, this was a gut punch, man. Like, so many people around the wrestling sphere were hit really hard by this, and there's a good reason for that. Terry Funk is one of the most influential, one of the most important, one of the greatest pro wrestlers of all time. You know, we joke on this channel whenever, and we do this, like, every time someone says, I'm retiring or whatever, we always say, well, the, Teddy Fun the Terry Funk rule comes into play because yeah. that's how long... Terry Funk stuck around for. He had so many retirements, came back so many times. He debuted in 1965, right? And his last match was in 2017. Uh, the guy has had a decade spanning career. He was a legend for the NWA in the territories. He was a promoter in Amarillo. He's a legend in all Japan pro wrestling in the 70s and 80s. He reinvented himself for ECW in the 90s and became a very important figure for that company as well. He's been a technician a tag wrestler, a great babyface, great heel, a deathmatch guy. He's done everything in pro wrestling. For me, the most adaptable and versatile wrestler of all time. And all the best to Terry Funk uh, and whatever he's going through the moment. This just really sucks, man. Yeah. And uh, I want nothing but the best for that guy. One of the all-time greats. One of my personal favorites as well. Um, yeah, sucky, sucky yeah, stuff. Um, let's move over to NXT. Uh, we're going to talk Roderick Strong. A report here from Fightful Select. Roderick Strong has signed a new contract with NXT and it looks like uh, some big things are in that guy's future, which is very nice to hear indeed. Uh, Strong, of course, has been off television for a while. He uh, took some time off in April. He came back with the Diamond Mine a few weeks ago. Uh, they debuted, of course, by attacking Kushida. And it says here in the report, this is appropriate, given that Kushida is the NXT Cruiserweight Champion, Strong will be factoring in to WWE's plans to put more focus on the Cruiserweight division. So. You know, you think of something like that. Uh, Strong versus Kushida sounds like a pretty good cruiserweight title program, uh, oh, oh, oh. if that's the route they choose to go down. But yeah, this is this is good to hear. Strong's obviously been with NXT for a while. I think he debuted in, yeah, it would have been 2016 when he was teaming with Austin Aries and everything else. Been around for a long time, through the Undisputed Era, through everything else. Diamond Mine looks cool. Happy to hear this. He found out the news prior to the Diamond Mine. Sorry, he found out the news? He uh, agreed the contract yeah. prior to Diamond Mine's debut and everything else. And uh, yeah, man, happy he's going to be around around a while longer. I like Roderick Strong a lot. Yeah, he's fantastic. For me, one of the best uh, wrestlers that I've got in NXT. I think of the ground that covers. So excited that he's finally given the attention uh, that he's deserved for, for such a long time. I sense like any cruiserweight or any anyone in NXT, you know, like in uh, like Star Trek or Star Wars or whatever it is, where they say like, oh, I feel a disturbance in the force. I feel like when Roderick Strong put pen to paper there, everyone in NXT's back just twinged slightly and they're like, oh, so I just saw a bad to happen. <laughs> So yeah, best of luck to him and, and really excited to see what they do with Diamond Mine, particularly and not only with Roderick Strong, but Malcolm Bivens. Give him a mic every week. It's really easy. He's a fantastic talker. Uh, and speaking of NXT, last night it was the Great American Bash. Spoilers, if you don't want to know anything, skip ahead like two, three minutes until you can see me waving my arms about whatever it may be. Uh, because there was a title change on last night's Great American Bash and it involved the women's Tag Team Championships, Io Shirai and Zoe Stark defeating the way, or the Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell of the way, of course, uh, to win those tag team titles. Not 100% straightforward. We also got the return of Tegan Knox. We speculated on this yesterday, uh, that battery charging and her having the dark match on Monday Night Raw on Monday, of course. Um, yes, she appeared. They did the battery charging gimmick. It appeared on all the screens. It went to 100%. There she was on the stage. Candice LeRae couldn't believe what she was seeing. She was knocked out of the ring. Uh, and Zoe Stark hit her finisher on Indy Hartwell. Got the one, two, three. And Io Shirai and Indy Hartwell. Uh, no, no, no. Io Shirai and Zoe <laughs> Stark are your new NXT Women's Tag Team Champions. Uh, bad news as well from the Great American Bash last night. Cameron Grimes losing to LA Knight. He will now have to be his butler, which in storyline is really good. That's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> and Adam Cole defeated Kyle O'Reilly in the main event. In a great main event, if I'm honest. 
and uh, yeah, well, that's never going to end that feud, basically, is it, Andy? <laughs> no, it's going to continue forever, baby. Uh, we're going to get like a 90 minute match from these two at some point. No, last night was a lot shorter. It was a better match, in my opinion, as well. Yes, but, uh, absolutely. Yeah, it's really cool to have Tegan Knox back. We spoke about that yesterday, of course. Um, but it's also nice to see someone fresh, new, and exciting like Zoe Stark getting a belt so early in her WWE career. We've spoken a little bit about how NXT does have, you know, a bit of sameness at times with the personnel and everything else. It's more of a problem in the NXT title scene than elsewhere, but it's still cool to see someone ascend like this. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what her and Shirai can do with the belts. And next week on NXT, the NXT Championship will be on the line. Carrying Cross versus Johnny Gargano with Samoa Joe as a special guest referee. God damn, that's going to be good. Right, arms in the air like you just don't care. It's time to move on <laughs> to our Twitter questions at what culture WWE. Of course, we want to get in touch with this. First question today comes from Richard DeGrunchy. Nice. Sorry, great surname there, Richard. Good lads. Do you think WWE is intentionally making Charlotte and Rhea unlikable because they have plans <laughs> for another babyface to join the fray, perhaps a returning Becky Lynch at Money in the Bank, or is it actually just this bad? It's just bad, mate. It's just bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I think the problem is that they just have no idea how to write this Rhea Ripley character. Um, Charlotte Flair is someone who's always going to attract a certain level of booze, and I think she is better uh, as yeah. a heel in general. But they've just not done a good job of presenting likeable qualities in Rhea Ripley throughout all of this storyline, to say the very least. So I think it's a product of poor writing rather than a deliberate attempt to make everyone go, boo, you two, uh, before Becky Lynch or someone else comes back. Yeah, it, it, it's mad that literally this time last year, the Great American Bash, Rhea Ripley was fighting Aaliyah and Robert Stone with Robert Stone in boxing gear. And somehow oh, now she's on man. Raw and the champion. She's in a worse position a year later because they just do not know how to book her. And she's such a young talent. She's obviously going to get, you know, in five years' time, going to be sat here and she's still going to be doing amazing things wherever she ends up. But God damn it, just write her as a badass who wants to get redemption against Charlotte Flair, who defeat? It's so obvious. The WrestleMania right 36 storyline is it's so right there. right there. And yet they've gone, huh, how about you kick the crutch out of each other's crutches? Ridiculous. Rubbish. Uh, Mateus, Matthias? Mateus. Mateus. Geronimo, uh, regardless. It's a great surname again. Uh, it says, hi, amigos. Good morning. Good luck to England once again. Come on, England. It's coming home. Uh, assuming that Gargano Gar Gar yeah. is not beating Cross, who would you like to dethrone him as NXT champ? My choice would be Michael Hamlet. Sorry, I mean the ring general, Walter. I refuse to answer that question. Is you so rudely included and it's coming home in it. So uh, I'm going <laughs> to defer to my colleague here. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to be Walter, uh, as much as that would be too whoa, a hell of a fight. That I do think it's going to be Carter O'Reilly still. I think they're, yeah. they're, that's the, the storyline they've been booking. Feels like some LTST, some long-term storytelling here for NXT. Uh, and it may well be sooner rather than later, though, because, to be honest, going into this match, you think, oh, yeah, obviously, Gargano's not going to win. But maybe he is, because maybe they'll just go, we want Karrion Cross on the main roster for when fans return. So who bloody knows? Samoa Joe being special guest referee. Ooh, well, yeah. that makes things very, very tasty. Final question today comes from Mr. Ghost, who says, if Simon Miller to appear at an AEW UK show, who would you like to see him face? Personally, I'd choose Orange Cassidy for the shenanigans alone. That would be a lot of fun. That would be a lot of fun. But I want a triple threat. That's what I want. I want a three-way. It's the Battle of the Balds. Four-way. Simon Miller. Okay. Scorpio Sky. Oh, the Blade and Christopher Daniels. Oh. Who, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the baldest of them all? I am sure there are other great baldies that I'm forgetting about, uh, but I think this would be a very great match for the bald community in particular. And yeah, John Moxley, he's bald now. Throw him in. Why not? I was about to make it a six pack <laughs> challenge. Put Luther in there. <laughs> and uh, John Moxley, the biggest bald of them all now, and he comes. Uh, have him kill Marco Stunt because uh, that's the only way you can turn Simon Miller heel and I yeah. don't know why I'm booking or Anthony a go-go because oh god damn that'd be a hell of a fight yeah tidy or Lance Archer I, I'm spoiled for choice uh, Kenny Omega let's just have the dream match let's have the star match that we know that those two could have uh, let's move on to today's and finally and for god's sake we need some good news today so I just want to say massive congratulations from all of us here at What Culture to Dana Brooke who got engaged to her boxer other half 
gonna butcher this. Ulysses Diaz, is that right? I, I think so. apologize if I've butchered that name there. But yeah, lovely news, Andy. Just needed something to make us smile today. A little bit of positivity on a Wednesday morning. You love to see it. Congratulations to Dana and Ulysses. Yeah, congratulations. Lovely to see. Uh, let us know your thoughts on that and all today's news stories in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. Myself and the Dandy Boys sitting down to discuss the Great American Bash and look ahead to AEW Road Rager tonight. Uh, you can also let us know your thoughts and Twitter questions on Twitter at What Culture WWE. Watch there. You can follow both of us. You can follow Andy Murray at... At Andy H. Murray. The H stands for home, as in it's going home when England lose. It also stands for home, as in it's coming home. <laughs> Come on, England tonight. And also, <laughs> just to be nice, because they're a nice country with nice people, good luck to Denmark as well, regardless. It's going to be some absolute housery for Italy in the final, whatever happens. So, yeah... Red and white all the way, one way or another. <laughs> um, you can follow me on Twitter at Adam Wilbur. Follow us all at What Culture WWE. But for now, my thanks to Andy Murray, John Barnes, and you for watching. And we will see you soon. <laughs> John Barnes. <laughs>